The following extracts were taken from the Statement of Financial Position of Kai Limited. Assets, Inventory, Trade and Other Payables, Cash and Cash Equivalents. This is only extracts. Um, mortgage Loan, Current Liabilities, Trade and Other Creditors, Source for Income Tax, Bank Overdraft, Shorten Portion of Interest Bearing Mortgage Bond. Guys, whenever you see a statement of financial position where the shorten portion of the long-term loan is shown under current liabilities, remember to add the shorten portion to the long-term loan because the shorten and the long-term together equals the account balance. And that is what you're after. So wherever there's a shorten portion of a loan, remember that the total loan in the beginning of the year was 18,000 and at the end of the year, it was 46,000. And then there's a normal short-term loan as well. Then they give you extract of the st a statement of changes in equity. And actually, if they give you that, that's quite easy to complete the cash flow statement because they've told you, yeah, like issued shares, shares issued 60,000. So, and the, and the share premium 5,000. So the total 65,000. So what was the proceeds with the issue of the shares? 65,000. A buyback of shares, 5,000 is nothing in the retained earnings column. So therefore, the amount that was a cash outflow was 5,000. Revaluation of land. Now that they haven't told us at any other place. So that revaluation of land of 20,000 rand. You have to take into consideration when you do your PPE accounts. Net profit for the year, then there was an ordinary dividend of a million. Now immediately if there was a dividend of, of a thousand, I'm sorry, of a thousand and I go back to current liabilities and there's no outstanding shareholders for dividends, it means it has been paid for the year. A certain items that were appearing in the statement of profit and loss was things like rent income. Now, rent income, if we do the direct method, uh, we can include rent income with your revenue figure. Now, listen, rent income is not going to be in your debtors account. It's not going to be in your sales account. So that will be in your rent income account, and then you have to add it to your rent income. That is the one alternative. The other alternative is to, to treat rental income like a separately disclosable item. Um, like you will treat dividend income, for instance. And then you're going to show that under the line of cash flow from operating activities. You have a choice. You can treat it in either one of the two ways. Finance costs, separately disclosable. Dividend income, separately disclosable. Interest earned and profit with the sale of equipment. In this question, that treated rental income as part of revenue. But you will see that I do not have any other figures to complete cash flow, cash received from customers or cash paid to um, employees and suppliers. So therefore, the other question wants you to do this, prepare the statement of cash flow as of 30 September 2013. Also include the note, the reconcili reconciliation note of profit before tax was cash generated from operations. Note. Cash received from customers and cash paid to suppliers and employees are not required separately. Now, if you don't require that separately, what do I have to do? Then I have to use the indirect method because I cannot use the direct method. It's senseless. I cannot do that. So I, I'm going to do the indirect method of doing this cash flow statement. Okay. Now, when we do the indirect method, where do we start? We start at our profit before tax. Um, let's just, just quickly run through the other additional in equipment. That was number two. The tax expense for the year was 12,950 Rand. I'm sure we're going to need that. Here again, number four is equipment. Number five, you may assume that the short-term portion of the mortgage loan was settled at the appropriate date. Now, that's a nice way of telling you that this shortened portion of the loan of 8,000 Rand was paid, actually, when do we classify something as a shortened portion? If it's going to be paid in the next 12 months after year end. The next 12 months after year end is in the 2013 year. So, it's a nice way of telling you that that 8,000 Rand has, in fact, been paid. The property plant and equipment consists out of land and out of equipment. 
and let's start then with our indirect method and our indirect method our cash flow statement starts with profit before tax now i don't know what the profit before tax is they don't tell me in this question what the profit before tax is but i can work it out because i have the net profit for the year as per the statement of changes in equity and then i know that i do transfer to the statement of changes in equity net profit of the tax they gave me the tax expense for the year they said the tax expense amounted to 12,950 so then it's an easy calculation to make what is the profit before tax it must be the 25,444 plus 12,950 so let's start here profit before tax 25,444 plus 12,950 gives us a total of 38,394. Now we're going to adjust it first for non-cash flow items. Going back here to the information that they gave us, non-cash flow items, um, profit on the sale of equipment, 1,200. Now I assume we will have to do all our PPE transactions first in order to, to, to see at what is the other um, non cash flow items that we can extract. So let's start with our PPE transactions. Land. Opening balance 25,000, closing balance 100,000, and then out of the statement of changes in equity, we saw that there was a revaluation of 20,000. Opening balance 25,000, closing balance 100,000. Revaluation 20,000, and if we're going to finish this account off, we will see that there was new land and buildings acquired for 55,000 rand. <coughs> now, if it was new land and buildings, I think it's also then safe to assume it was for expansion purposes. So, in our cash flow statement when we get to our cash flow from investing activities purchase of land and buildings and there it was 55,000 rand for expansion purposes 55,000 rand for expansion purposes and let's see our equipment that cost our accumulated depreciation and our asset disposal equipment cost price opening balance 70,000 closing balance 140,000 Accumulated depreciation, opening balance 34,160, closing balance 44,674. Opening balance, closing balance. Um, they've told us here, equipment with original cost of 10,000 rand was sold during the year. At the date of the sale, the accumulated depreciation was 5,392. Equipment purchased during the year was to replace the equipment which was sold. Okay, let's do this transaction. We take the cost out, uh, 10,000. We take it to the asset disposal account. We take the accumulated depreciation on that asset disposed of out, 5392, and we're going to park it there, 5392. Then they tell us equipment with a cost of 50,000 Rand was purchased on 1 April for expansion purposes because they did not have sufficient cash for the purchase order shares were issued to the supplier um, in payment of the cost price of the asset now well that is a separate transaction which we will deal with when we get to share capital but this 50,000 we have to put into our accounts now so new expansion 50,000 and that we're going to put on our um, cash flow statement investment activities purchase of equipment for expansion purposes, there it is, 50,000 Rand. Uh, profit on the sale of equipment was 1,200 Rand. Now we did transfer the cost price of that equipment to the asset disposal account. It is. 
and the uh, accumulated depreciation as well. So profit on disposal 1,200. So therefore the proceeds on this account with the sale of the asset was 5,808. In our investment activity section, uh, proceeds, where is that? Proceeds on the sale of equipment, 5,808 cash inflow. Now, the only thing that's going to happen here is that we're going to balance off our accounts. If we're going to balance off, if we rebalance off this one, our equipment at cost, you will see that there is still another 50,000, uh, we've done the 50,000, still another 30,000 rand debit left that we have to account for, and that is the equipment which was purchased for replacement purposes. This equipment was purchased during the year was to replace the equipment sold. So that is that additional amount there of 30,000. And when we go to our cash flow statement, there it is, purchase of equipment for replacement purposes, 30,000 rand. Just get rid of this thing. Right. Um, and then, as, then after we've done that, we have oh, accumulated depreciation. We had an opening balance, a closing balance, and the disposal. So therefore, the balancing figure on the credit side of the accumulated depreciation can only be our depreciation expense for the year, 15906. Right, going back to our um, profit before tax, which we are going to uh, adjust for non-cash flow items, we can now put in depreciation, which we've calculated at 15906. We can put in this profit on disposal of equipment of 1,200 Rand as well. 1,200 Rand. And then that was all the non-cash flow items. Cash flow items that we uh, or items that we're going to disclose separately. Well, there we're going to disclose finance costs separately, dividend income se separately, interest earned separately. That one we've already done. Finance cost, we're going to add it to our co uh, the net profit before tax. Why? Because interest paid has reduced profit before tax. So if we want to eliminate that, we have to add it back. Interest received, we're going to deduct. Why? It increased our profit before tax. So therefore, we're going to take it out again. And the same thing applies to dividends received. I have to subtract it from my profit before tax to eliminate that figure. Working capital changes. Now, that will be all of them. And starting with trade and other debtors, uh, it looks as if there was an increase in trade and other debtors of a thousand rand. There's our increase in our inventory figure that looks like six thousand rand. The increase in trade and other debtors is a cash outflow. The increase in inventory is a cash outflow. Inventory increase, six thousand cash outflow. Increase in debtors, cash outflow, and then our uh, trade and other creditors. There was a decrease there of 1,550 Rand, and because it was a decrease, it was also a cash outflow on 5,5,5. So now we can determine what was the cash generated from operations, 46,5,1,0. Now, if we did apply the direct method, we do not have enough information to calculate those two line items, and in the question they say, well, you can ignore that. Then you would have started with a 46510. So it's a bit silly to ask you to do this because it doesn't mean anything. So this question, question should have been um, the indirect method from the start where you would have started here, then get to the 50, 46510 and then just continue here. Now we're going to show our separately disclosable items. Interest received, 740 Rand. We're going to show... Uh, dividends received, 1,100 Rand. We're going to show um, finance cost paid, 3,800. Cash outflow, so it's a minus, minus 3,800. Let's quickly do tax. They told us that we outsourced 4,550 at the beginning of the year. They also told us that we, we outsourced for the current year an amount of 12,950 
and at year end there's still an amount outstanding of 6,100 Rand. So if you look at the source account, there's that now, I didn't do that separately. It's easy enough to figure that one out for yourself. So that would be the opening balance for 550 plus the tax charge for the year, less the outstanding balance at the end of the year. So the actual amount paid was 11,400 um, Rand. Then dividends paid. Now, the dividends paid, we already spoke about. We said, well, there's no shareholders for dividends outstanding at the end of the year. So, therefore, our dividend that was declared for the year must have been paid. So, dividends paid would have been then equal to the 1,000 rand. Um, investing activities, I think we've done all of them. Cash flow from financing activities. So, let's have a look at our financing activities. They clearly, she's issued 65,000 Rand. Uh, issue of ordinary shares, 65,000 Rand. Buyback of shares. Buyback of preference shares, 5,000 Rand. That was the total. There was nothing in the share premium, oh, in the retained earnings account, so there was no premium on the buyback transaction. So that is a purely a cash outflow of 5,000 Rand. It's not actually a redemption, this guys. There's a slight difference. It's buyback, like indicated in the statement of changes in equity. Okay. 5,000 Rand. Then our short-term finance, the short-term loan, there was a slight increase in that loan, and that is a cash inflow. So the, the increase was 710 Rand, and then they've told us that they have for the mortgage loan. Now look at the mortgage loan. The mortgage loan, you're going to start off with an opening balance of 18,000, and you're going to close with a closing balance of the 40,000 plus the 6,000, 46,000. So there's the closing balance, there's the opening balance. They tell us in the question that you can assume that all the short-term commitments of the loan was actually settled at the appropriate date there. So that means that that short-term portion of the loan, that 8,000 Rand, was paid for in this year. Now, just by balancing off this account, you can see that we, we need something on the credit side to make this account balance, and that must be new loan finance that we have received based on our mortgage, and that is additional 36,000 Rand. So there we're going to add the 36,000, will be cash inflow from that mortgage, and there's the 8,000 that we have repaid. Cash and cash equivalents, well, that's the easy one. What was our balance in the beginning of the year? 5,000 Rand at the end of the year, it was a bank overdraft of 3332, so there was a decrease in cash resources of 8332 for the year. Now, if you're going to take our 32150, you're going to take minus 129192 plus 88710, it's going to give you this 8332 negative figure for the year.